welcome to the channel and in this video we are going to talk about k8 interview questions part 3 so our first question is what is kubernetes networking and how does it work but before we proceed let me tell you that these questions are kind of intermediate level which will be uh, beneficial for the one who is having the experience around 2 plus 2 to 5 and uh, similar kind of thing so let's get, get started with the first question that is on the networking side what is kubernetes networking and how does it work so kubernetes networking allow for communication between ports services and external clients like uh, the different dns available or the applications which are available correct how the networking will flow between, uh, from to and fro uh, from the cluster so if you see there are four pointers how the port to port communication will happen each port gets a unique ip assigned and can communicate within the cluster second point is service to port communication services provide a stable network endpoint for a group of ports as ports are informal that means uh, whenever a port will get restarted it, its ip address will change so service will give you a static ip address through which you can uh, uh, the network the network can flow each port gets a new ip assigned every time it is created correct so with the help of service they can uh, communicate uh, in a better way third one is ingress controllers manage external http or https traffic so with the help of ingress controller you can route your traffic to the different uh, ingress and uh, moving forward to the different services and then uh, it will go to the pod ultimately fourth point is network policies so when we talk about the network policy so here we define that how the network can be either uh, create uh, either communicated into the, diff into the different namespace or if you want to restrict the communication into the different namespace like within the one cluster you have multiple namespace a b and c and you want to restrict the communication from a to c so with the help of network policy you can restrict that as well moving towards the second question what is role based access control in kubernetes so it's called as a rbac as well role based access control so it's a kind of security mechanism that restricts user and service based on their permissions it consists of role and cluster roles define the actions allowed on resources like what kind of action you can perform get action your uh, modify action or delete action write action so all those kind of actions are defined over there then we do the role bindings and cluster role binding assign roles to user or service accounts like we used to create the service account and the service account will have the binding with the cluster rules and uh, with the help of that your application will communicate and it will, will be able to communicate with the different services which are of your cloud services or any of the different objects within the Kubernetes cluster so this is kind of your yml template you can see so these are kind of permission within the words get watch list so these actions can be performed and who can perform on the resources the on the ports level this can be po uh, performed so it's a uh, if you see the name of the YML, so it's a kind of pod reader. So you can get, you can watch, you can list. Moving forward towards the third question, this YML you can uh, go through. But let's move to the third question. How does Kubernetes auto scaling work? So when we talk about the Kubernetes auto scaling, we are talking about if traffic goes uh, on the higher side. So how your Kubernetes will uh, behave, correct? How the pods will behave, how uh, your number of node uh, worker nodes will behave. So if you want to auto uh, scale up and down the in number of ports so you can enable your hp horizontal port auto scaler and that will adjust the number of ports based on cpu uses memory uses or custom matrix like you define certain threshold or the number of inputs and based on that your uh, number of ports will increase for a particular microservice like whatever the configuration you passed according to that then you can enable your uh, vp as well that means vertical port auto scaler that will adjust the <coughs> cpu and memory request for the individual ports like you have one uh, port running for which you have allocated uh, one gb of memory and you want to uh, scale it based on the certain conditions so you can uh, write down your vertical port auto scaler uh, policy and with the help of that it will adjust that then the third one is uh, cluster auto scaler so if uh, by any chance your traffic goes higher and you uh, don't want to uh, only increase the number of ports but you also want to increase the number of nodes as well so whenever you want to increase the number of worker nodes you can use the cluster auto scaler concept for that you can use the tools which are available for uh, auto scaling like carpenter and others and you can use that as well 
moving towards the fourth question how do you debug cabinet spot so that's the question which comes uh, every time whenever you appear for any interview uh, in terms of cloud engineer or the devops engineer or platform engineer or any uh, development field as well uh, like if you face any uh, issue during your deployment after the deployment how will you start debugging so for that you can go with the kubectl commands first command you can run kubectl logs to check the container logs or the pod logs whatever the error is coming based on that you can do the troubleshooting you can also go with the kubectl describe port so that you will see like uh, what are all configuration you have passed if there is any particular uh, message coming while doing the describe so you can check all the in events and the recent status whether whether it's failed or whether it's passed correct running in the running state correct then you can do the kubectl uh, exec command to uh, open the interactive set with the help of that you can run your linux command and uh, you can do the further troubleshooting like you can get into the container and you will be running your uh, custom commands based on requirement or you can go with the kubectl get pods list down all the pods which are with the status failed similarly you can go with the kubectl events and uh, kubectl uh, get pods all these kubectl command you can run uh, and do the troubleshooting based on the requirement moving towards the fifth question how do you perform rolling updates and rollbacks in kubernetes like you have uh, to deploy from one version to another version how will you do that or if you have deployed on the next higher version and if you have to come back because of any uh, issues in the newer version so how will you do the rollback as well so you have to tell both the things how will you perform rolling updates or if there is any issue how will you roll back your deployment so get deployment supports rolling updates to avoid downtime like in the rolling update what happens your pods goes one by one like the uh, the older pods goes one by one down and the newer pod will come one by one up like if one newer pod comes up the one uh, older pod will go down so it goes in uh, goes like one by one so that your uh, traffic will be distributed uh, uh, horizontally or you can say uniformly so that your uh, performance or the application will not uh, see any kind of downtime or any uh, slowness towards the application so you can perform a rolling update by editing a deployment or explicitly setting its image to a new version whenever you will set a new version of the image it will go for the rolling update and your pod will start getting uh, created for the newer version one by one correct if you have to roll back your deployment so you can use the kubectl rollout command and then your deployment can be rolled back with the help of this next question is what is an ingress in kubernetes and how does it work so ingress is in a kind of api object that manages external http or http yes access to services inside a kubernetes cluster it allow routing request based on the hostname and path so if you have a particular dns and uh, you have to route uh, that particular request to uh, any particular service so ingress will help you to route the uh, your traffic to different uh, services like if you see this yml file you see that there is a host my app.example.com if there is a path forward slash or in uh, slash uh, abc so based on that it will route to the uh, actual service like the on the my service it will route the traffic so my abc.example.com request will come to this my service and my service will further route it to the pod where your actual container or over where your actual application is running so that will re, uh, return you the response Correct. so this is how your ingress helps in the networking part next question is how does kubernetes handle resource limits and request so when we talk about the resource limits and request we are talking about the cpu and memory like how much memory or cpu is required for any process to run or any container to run which is uh, which is running with the, uh, within the pod so there might be multiple containers there might be a single container within a single pod as well so if you see request and limits are for pods to ensure fair allocation and avoid the overuse of cluster resources request are the minimum amount of cpu if you see the uh, pointer you request are the minimum amount of cpu and memory a pod needs they are permanently assigned to pod like if you are uh, requesting for 0.5 gb of memory 0.5 uh, core of cpu correct half of the core of cpu so that will be permanently allocated for that particular process while limit is the maximum one correct like if you have 2 gb of uh, limit so you can assign that 
uh, right now as of now i need 0.5 uh, gb of memory but if there is any requirement that it has to go higher so you can define a limit as well that means it can go up to the 2 gb correct so that you can define in the limit if you see the yml file over here in the pod there is a so within the container uh, configuration there is a uh, you can say uh, the sex for the resources within which it's defined as a request and limit so in the in the request if you see memory is 20, uh, 256 mb while the limit is 512 correct so the uh, resource request is the one which can be set as a permanent and the limited uh, limited one while limit is the maximum limit which can be consumed so that's the difference between request and uh, limit and this can be defined for the different uh, containers as well which are running within your uh, pods correct so within this pod there will be one container then there will be different containers so for each container you can define your request and limits okay. moving towards the eighth question uh, where it went what happens if a pod resource needs to grow beyond the assigned limits like that means if you have defined 500 uh, MB of the limits uh, 512 uh, MB of the memory and your process needs more than this whatever the limit you have defined so what will happen if it's related to memory if you see the definition over here if a pod's memory consumption exceed its assigned memory given it immediately kills if you see this uh, highlighted one it's imme it immediately kills the container with an out of memory error so what whenever your uh, requirement will exceed for the memory uh, uh, more than the limited one and uh, which is the limit it will uh, result into the error out of memory and your container will get restarted. while if this uh, problem occurs for the cpu it will not get restarted. if you see the um, uh, line over here it is not killed instead given its throttle cpu usage which will cause the slowness of the application that means cpu will uh, slow down your performance of the application but it will not be killed so your application will be running but for the end user it will be kind of slow now moving towards the ninth question what are init containers and when should you use them init containers are special containers that run before the primary containers start like if you have a container where your main application is running like your abc.com application is running but before this abc.com application you need any kind of secret which needs to be read and which will be utilized in your main container so that it will make the connectivity and it will run the application so your init container will run first it will fetch the secret and then it will help you to run the main container so if you see the definition which is written over here as well they help prepare the environment by checking the dependency loading configuration files or setting up the data one example could be an init container that waits for a database to be up and running so here the init container is checking for the database to be up once the database will be up and running your main container will get started correct it can be used for any purpose here it is being used for the database up last question and uh, the 10th question how does kubernetes handle pod disruptions and high availability so when we talk about the pod disruptions we are talking about like what happens if my all the, for a particular microservice just suppose that that there are five number of pods which are running and all these five number of pods are running in only one node so if by any chance one node goes down that particular specific node goes down or your application will shut down correct so given it since you that all the ports of a particular microservice should not go to only one node but it should be uh, distributed informally to the different nodes so how that can be uh, achieved for that there is a port disruptions budget it ensures a minimum number of port remain available during voluntary disruptions example cluster updates where node needs to be scaled down so when if even if there is a node is going down this uh, minimum number of ports will be available correct then there is a concept of pod affinity and anti affinity which controls for which pod can be scheduled together or separately so whether you want to the uh, all the ports should go to only one node or a specific node or you want to distribute your ports to the different uh, node so that you can handle through the uh, concept of pod affinity and anti affinity then there is a third option node selectors and tents and toleration uh, tolerations so what did the, uh, this one do it controls how workloads are distributed across node correct 
so if you want to see there is a yml file and uh, this yml file you can check here yeah this is the yml file the last one api version policy view pod description budget metadata and the specification so that one is there okay. so uh, this one uh, this is all what i wanted to talk about and uh, stay tuned with the channel and subscribe to the channel for more such interview questions and uh, devops related content on the aws cloud terraform kate ci cd and other uh, tech stack till the time thank you bye bye